Right, the sports editor is really grateful to chat with Brian McMillan, who's arguably one of the most respected all-rounders to have returned in South Africa, with a batting average of just under 14 test cricket and a bowling average of 33.8. Brian was always on hand to see South African team to victory. Brian, there's been lots of news in the cricketing world, um, but I think we'd look at the test against India and a true show of South African grit and determination to win the series 2-1, don't you think? Definitely. And you know what, Brian, and you know, just looking at it, maybe there was, that we just needed, we just needed a pure, rugged, down-to-earth, hard performance. You know, nothing about airs and graces, just get stuck in and play cricket. You know, does that make sense? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, think, I think the biggest problem with a lot of sporting sides, you've got superstars, um, you know, huge, uh, and, and people tend to try and follow them. I think South Africans realize there's no really huge superstars. I think the killers are, are gone at the moment. But they brought in some youngsters like uh, Mark Janssen and uh, obviously and Peters on the batting front and maybe stars in the future. But um, the blokes realize that they're going to play as a team. And, uh, and you know, with, with Elgo uh, digging in like that, it was fantastic to see uh, Robada t- t- uh, turn it on in, in the second and uh, the last test match. And Mark Janssen was, was, was uh, a bit of pressure. It's, uh, what a fantastic performance. Uh, it, uh, it's really exciting to see. And if we get Karen playing like us and go from strength to strength with, with Boucher at the arm, it'd be fantastic. I'm, I'm really looking forward to see what they can produce. No, absolutely. It's, yeah, it's, it's been really, really good. And it's just, it really sort of gave, um, if I can say, a, a kick for South African cricket in the right direction. You know, there's been so much negativity and just, you say anything, uh, you actually getting van based Um does this victory just sort of ease the tensions and, and grow necessary support? Yeah, I think we were all getting a, a very disappointing the cooking fraternity and sin up and we constant float around and but unfortunately the young Decock retired from Test Cricket, which is a, a real shame for me. Um and uh, you know, right now I'm sitting here and I'm so happy that I'm South African and and, and uh, now you know, it's a privilege to watch Alex play, and I just hope they get from strength to strength, and uh, the positivity is on the field, and uh, uh, we 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 in a business where uh, everybody uh, bases the decisions on positivity in the country, and we see that uh, upturn in our business uh, simply because of of the upturn of the us and the economy, and the people will probably love base me, but I mean. The positivity, a lot of people support sport in this country, and it's as simple as that. Um, when a sports student, well, people are happy and jovial and uh, seem to reflect uh, in the economy, which is great. Yeah, definitely. No, it really, really is important. And that, Brian, you know, there's always the, the mental aspect. And that's something I touch on quite often. And you've been there, you've been into some tough games. The guys have been through a tough series now and come on top of it. That, that mental shift, was it also sort of part of a major, major growing experience for some of the players, do you think? Absolutely. I think uh, Mark Young's grew uh, enormously as he went on the, into the last test match. Um, I think Rabada was, uh, was probably quite happy that he had somebody who can get a body attack. Um, yeah, Peterson, he went from strength to strength. The last test match was just simply phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we saw as, as the late uh, Clive Rice to say, you got to you, you got to find all cogs. Um, we spoke with a couple of players who got to kick in, and they're, they're tremendous players as well. Um, I don't think we've seen the best of Markham, to be quite honest. Um, uh, Maharaj, we haven't seen the best of him either, and I think they're fantastic creators. Um, I just think, uh, and Jan Babuma, I mean, he, he's going from strength to strength there uh, with, with um, and he's looking the part now where he's a year or so back, he, 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 you know, uh, I, I questioned, you know. So he's actually going to look the part and then taking confidence when he's taking the boat along, which is fantastic. Confidence is, is a wonderful thing in sport. And um, 
other. I'm looking forward to the next, uh, next game that they play. <laughs> Absolutely. But that was my next question, and it was on Aiden Markram. Um, I think he's still a fantastic talent, no matter what people may say. But opening the batting, is he not struggling with a new ball? Should he not be considered for maybe three or four? Look, uh, you, you know, you, you, generally speaking, the, the new ball is, well, I wouldn't say it's easier, but I mean, sometimes it, it's better to play. Mm. Uh, on a flat and wicket, it comes on quite nasty, and the swing is, uh, you don't get too much reverse swing with it, which we, we, which helps you, get, which might happen down the order. Um, I think technically there's a, there's a flaw there, and, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, and I've heard that, uh, people have helped with him, it doesn't seem to be listening too, too, too closely to it, but, um, I think you'll have to feel it the hard way and, and work his way around. We can't we can't take it open better and hide him at four or five or something like because he will be exposed there as well. There's mm-hmm. no doubt about. It. And um, if he's open better, he must have open better. It's as simple as that. Um, we got a better to that they custom to bat in a certain order, then you can't mess him around just because somebody's out of form. If he's out of form at open better, then drop him and get another better in. It's as simple as that. There's lots of people around that, that, that can perform as well. And we see the young Peterson's coming to the series now and, and he's, he's, had a, he's had a hell of a series. So if, if Markham needs to bat and he needs to get some form, put him back into your provincial setup to get some runs and then bring him back in the side. It's as simple as that. And, but he has to sort out technically, he's a technical flaw. Um, you know, you can't play white ball cricket in test match. And that seems to be what he's trying to do. Yeah, no, for sure. Because I just want to add to what you're saying there, you know, about getting a, a new guy in and, and doing it. Because I think, I think Australia did it well, and I, I think England tried to use a similar rotation policy, but I, I think it's actually backfired against them. You know, looking at the Ashes, um, but yeah, surely now, you know, we've got New Zealand coming up. Surely that that's a chance for a young up coming guy. I think of Sardal Avia, who's in the squad. Give him a chance because these guys get taken to the squad, but you never ever see them. It must be a bit frustrating for them. I don't know. Yeah. So, what do you think? Looking at it, definitely. Yeah. Sorry. Because you got to rotate it. There's no doubt about it. Mm. I mean, young people get pulled into the squad, and all of a sudden, they sit on the bench and they don't get a chance. So they're coming from form. They come to the bench. They sit there for a week or two weeks, and they get out of form. And then all of a sudden, they get a little uh, opportunity, and all of a sudden, they're out of form. Now they must get runs again. So I, I think it's informed players must 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 be selected, especially in South Africa. Um, and if they're not playing the, the, the side, they must get played provincial cricket. Um, I'm not quite sure what the, the journey is on the provincial side, or franchise side as they call it. Mm. But, uh, you know, Markham struggled for a while now. Mm. Um, and technically he needs to sort it out. I, I'm, I certainly hope Mark Darch is helping, trying to help him with all get a, a, a better can help him, or maybe an Emla, or maybe a Callis, or something like that or maybe even someone older like Daryl John Cullinan um, who speaks the mental side as well or technical side of things uh, and he's been through everything uh, on, on that basis from the mental to, to technical and uh, but bring somebody in to help the, help the youngsters because Markham is, is, is a great asset for South African cricket and, and we have to make sure that we can turn him around to score runs because once he gets in he just reminds me of a right hand against but we he'll, he'll, he'll bully you to runs and get big runs. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're right. And bullying is a, is a good word that you use there. But Brian, are we one batsman short in our setup? Look, um, yes. I, um, I was quite surprised in the last test match. I, mm. I thought they would play the better. Um, I don't think my right ball took me overs and the same as uh, bowler the socks off. Um, you know, um, <laughs> I, I firmly believe um, Calvary is in too high up. He, he needs to move down. We, we definitely need another bat in the side. Mm. Um, but, uh, I mean, with all due respect, we haven't got too many all-rounders there, if you want to call it that. Um, so I think that's a big issue. All-rounder would, would, would add a bit of uh, bat in depth. But um, at, at this stage, unfortunately, I would have fought for the spinner in, in the side and, and carried another bat in the last test match which might have helped and made it a little easier for us, to be quite honest, because of the team is all the, all, all the bowling anyway. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you on that, because I'm going to give you some names out, some all-rounders, and from my perspective, the first thing that I, when I call these names out, is that they're only going to be known more as a bowling all-rounder. So it's John Mulder, Anita Pesquayo, Dwayne Petroius, 
Georgia know who I, I think maybe should have been included. Uh, anyway, so there's four all-rounders who sort of are in and out of the SA squad, but again, perhaps stronger with the ball than the bat. So what do we need to do? Or are we trying to... Where are we going to find another, excuse it, Brian McMillan or Jacques Callas who can bat just as well? Very, very true. So, Brian, I want to touch on something very interesting, but I have to ask you, uh, did you ever get into trouble for sharing your thoughts on the cricket pitch? You know, I think <laughs> my day there, there was some cricks, <laughs> because um, it, it, as Richard Snell once said, throwing is for the verbally crippled, and I think I must have been crippled. <laughs> 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 oh, my word. It is, it is actually uh, one of the most serious that I... One of the most funniest moments I've ever seen, you know, because, you know, that decision for the RBW, which I believe basically swung the game to South Africa's favour when Dean Alga wasn't given out, and they just lost their minds. Um, but you don't behave like that as a captain when you shout at the stun mark, do you? That's really the most special a captain nowadays. And it's a sad thing to go with cricket, which makes the test cricket so wonderful. <laughs> uh, and and uh, he is very expressive in his ways. And... Uh, I, I, I just giggled. I thought, yeah, I felt so much, uh, so, so bad for him. And, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it is what it is. You, you, you know, the scenes are there. Uh, they got the technology. The umpires are there. There's nothing you can do. I think uh, if, it, if it was a hunt chick for year or kept the vessel or something like that, they would uh, take him on a chin and, and uh, God, they never get him that badly. But, uh, but virtually, hey, uh, he's... <laughs> Yeah, he's a fantastic cricketer, and uh, he just wears everything the whole time. So, yeah, his emotions that get away with him. But so be it. He's what it is. It was fun to watch anyway. Yeah, it was. And, and that's why cricket, like you said, is such a fantastic thing. But what's interesting with his career, you know, last of the century, I think it was in 2019. So I think there's also that pressure, you know. He's got a test average of 50 runs. Like, the guy is proper. But I just, I think that he is human after all, and he, uh, he do up once in a while, but it just it really added character to the test. It really was fantastic test. But where do they draw the line in terms of reprimanding? Do you just say that you know like, he just lost his cool and and we carry on because South Africans are also very sensitive what happened with Rabada, etc., etc. We must just move on, mustn't we? Yeah, I, I think sometimes that some mark is it, it, good and it's, it's bad and things like that. Um, I think people and I know I know that you get paid for, I know it's in contracts, I know all that nonsense. Um, people have got to be sensitive. These, these, these blokes are under high pressure, uh, they're in isolation, they're doing this, they're doing that, and it's all about performance and just the way it is. You, you, if you remember John McEnroe, I mean, would he play in tennis nowadays? No, he wouldn't play in tennis nowadays. Yeah. I mean, I remember the, 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 you know, all days in the cricket field, the, the, when, when I grew up, and the amount of abuse and swearing that happened, and my mother and my aunt and my sister, and everybody took it. Um, but it's part of growing up. I mean, it's an expressive sport. As long as you don't get personal, I think that, that, that is the the, uh, the crux of the, of the whole argument. But uh, everybody wants to see emotions. Sports people are normal people. I, I mean, they have a beer and they pay taxes, hopefully. And, uh, you know, it's just the way it is. They've got to express themselves. They can't be mummies there and keep their mouth shut and carry on like it. And I think as a, as a spectator, you want to see the emotions. You want to see how they play it out. And I think it adds to it. You see how people, have, some people are quieter. Like a Jacques Kellett, I don't think he ever looked upset on the cricket field in, in his whole life. Mm. Um, but, but, but he was. I mean, he, he, he felt it, believe it, believe me. And, uh, and, uh, but he was not expressive. But, uh, Cody, he was so expressive. Also a great cricketer. Um, it's just the way it is. The crowds want to see it. They want to see emotion come out. 
Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I- I'm glad it's it's kept cricket interesting. It's really very necessary. But Brian, as we sort of draw towards an end, um, our next test is is away to New Zealand. But also, there's there's a bit of pressure there in the sense that we actually need to win away as well. Don't you feel? Correct. And uh, I tell you what, it's not going to be easy uh, mm-hmm. series away. It's England, they're going to be very good bargain and attack. Um, and, I, and I think the often is going to go to, to, to England in, uh, I think, in June, if I was to use yeah. my memory. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Brits are going to have the, the work cut out there as well. I mean, they've got a very good bargain side. I think the team is a very good side at the moment. And, uh, and they're a tough side. They, they really are tough competitors, even when they weren't as good as what they are now. So it's, we, we, we're going to try and win there. There's no doubt about it. Um, and uh, the blacks are going to just be positive about it. I mean, back themselves. Um, I think we've got a good, uh, a good pack at the moment. Uh, and I, I think Oaks is trying to perform. We've got a good body in attack at the moment. Good variation. And um, the bad in front here, we, I think we're better or so shy. And we, need, we definitely need him to come to the, to the full, there's absolutely no doubt about that. He, he's got to come to the full in a big way. Yeah, definitely, Brian, because if you look at it, you know, like you mentioned Keegan Peterson earlier, um, he was absolutely phenomenal, and I can only see that um, he's going to keep go doing well, touch wood, but if Markham can kick in as well, then I think we're really set in front of this and can just keep working hard. Hey, man, we are yeah. in Kuwait, cause, and Bavon has also been consistent, so that's what we need, man. We just need that one more guy to fire with um, a proper all rounder doing his job with the bat, but Jock, yeah, that's 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 brilliant. Maybe 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 they should convince a young cop to to turn around and then come and play, <laughs> and he can, we can keep all round yeah. and exactly we, we we get up there and, and score runs, big runs. Um, I mean, he, he, he's even a huge role for South Africa. We actually really need him. Uh, if if we can't, we actually need the cop to play. Yeah, Brian, I mean, I know I said we're going to end now, but that's just that's an interesting issue because although we don't always know what happens in, in, in the change and things like that, but to just, you know, drop it off like that, it does raise the suspicions as to what happened and it does sort of, it gives you an impression that things weren't always hunky-dory in the change rooms. I hope I'm not talking out of term, but it just, it gave that sort of feeling. Uh, do you think I've, I've missed the mark there or was there sort of perhaps one or two things that upset him? Look, I'm not very close to it, I've got to be honest, but uh, I think the questions that have been asked and will be asked about the whole uh, thing that's happened there. Um, I, I, just, I just think it's criminal that you find the uh, A.B. de Villiers that couldn't make a fire in the World Cups and there's a lot of speculation around that. I yeah. think it's criminal uh, that the cock has been allowed to only play one day cricket. And I know this family, and I know this kids, and I know the issues and all that nonsense. But they're so vital to South African cricket. That, uh, that we actually need them. And I think it's maybe it's payback time and uh, uh, that people must also realize that Cricket South Africa is, is, is growing to a certain stages where you actually earn big money and where you are in life. So sometimes it's a little bit of a payback time and they actually need to put something back inside of Cricket when you need it. And um, it does wash both ways, I've got to be honest. And um, But yeah, if, 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 if it's private things that happen, the selectors or coaches or board, I don't know, I'm not quite sure. They must resolve it. I mean, they are adults, and I'm talking from a proper business perspective. Um, it's about African cricket, it's about performing, it's about being on the big stage. It's really about your viewership, it's about your, your, your support and fans. That's really what it's about. No, definitely. But, yeah, interesting times. So let's see what happens with this Tess Arena. Let's see if India can hold on to their number one championship. Uh, position. Let's hope South Africa can be there and, and really be in the final a few years from now. But yeah, Brian, always a pleasure to chat to you. Thank you so much for your insight and really good to talk cricket to you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. Thanks for the call. Cheers, Bye.